Hi sunshine, thanks for joining me on week 18 of my journey. A quick reminder or trigger warning for both new and repeat visitors. Hi, my name is Lauren and my dad died this year, which is why I'm doing this. We had a very stressful relationship for a while and we're just starting to reconcile before he suddenly passed away. I am working through this by talking to strangers on the internet and doing various self-help projects along the way. I'd love it if you would like to join me. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk journaling. I don't know when my dad started to journal, but I know that he did for years probably decades. I know I started journaling at five because I still have that journal. It's purple with purple pages and little pink squiggles on the cover. And I wrote it was a birthday gift on the first page. The sad thing is my vocabulary has improved quite a bit since I was five. My spelling, on the other hand, that remains tragic. But honestly, I don't know if my dad encouraged my journaling exactly. I kind of think he didn't because I feel like I would have remembered it more if he had. For me, journaling is both a way to record events like, you know, I went here on this day and this is what happened, as well as getting my emotions out on paper. It helps me clarify what I'm feeling and let's face it, sometimes it helps me kind of dramatize what I'm feeling, especially as a teenager when everything was just so intense. It's been a good form of therapy for me. The one thing I rarely do is reread my journals. They're true in most senses of the word, but when it's about an emotional event, it's really less about the truth and more about how I felt about it at the time. Rereading that to dredge up old hurt and resentments, I think is a terrible idea. Sometimes I'll skim old journals, you know, like five or ten years later, just to kind of see what what I did, like what happened if I look at something from college, like, oh yeah, I forgot I went there or read that book or whatever. I usually do it when I'm like reorganizing my room or, you know, the storage where I keep my journals, you know, to make sure that they're still there and dry and there aren't spiders living there. It can be fun looking at old, old stuff and just kind of seeing what you have. But if I start feeling myself fall into old patterns of resentment, I'll stop and I'll do some, sorry for this pronunciation, Ho'oponopono, which is a Hawaiian forgiveness practice. I really like it. I've mentioned it a few times before and I will go over it again sometime, I'm sure. This is where my dad's and my journaling is really different. Ever since my parents got divorced, which was about 30 years ago, my father would use his journals to revisit old anger over and over. He didn't work through anything. He wallowed. I'm not saying he never tried to work through things because I know that he did. I just know that he was still angry about a lot of stuff over the past year that was still from, you know, when I was 13. Like we talked about, you know, my first car a couple weeks ago. It was that. He would start with, I was reading my old journals and, you know, you forced me to do X, Y, or Z. Personally, I have found the... Hawaiian forgiveness practice, I mentioned before, really helpful, along with another practice that I want to talk about next week. This is going to be where I remind you that everything I'm talking about 
is from my point of view. This is the way I experienced journaling and discussing the past with my dad. I know he saw things differently. I also want to mention something from a book that I have been recommending and absolutely loving recently, which is the Deadly Education series by Naomi Novak. The first in the series is Deadly Education. I think it's called the Scholomance series, but I can't spell that. Uh, in it, she talks about how people are never thinking about you as much as you imagine they are. So what you see as an intentional slight might be less than an afterthought to the other person. And even if it was deliberate, all your focus and energy spent being angry is time and energy that only hurts yourself. The other person can go on blithely while you're fuming. So if possible, try to let the anger go, even if it means, you know, you never speak to that other person again because they are toxic in your life. Try not to dwell. So that's it for me. I hope to see you here next week. You know, press all the buttons. Hopefully not the dislike one, but you know, <laughs> you do you. And until I see you again, I hope you live, laugh, and shine. Bye.